BMW spent decades cultivating its brand into a synonym for cool and sexy drivers' cars. Cars like the E46, M3, Z8, and the 007 series. Absolutely beautiful. But at the turn of the millennium, they started experimenting with their designs and nearly ruined everything. Hey guys, I'm Stipe, and this is my list for the top 7 ugliest BMWs of the 21st century. Let's go! Number 7 Making the BMW X3 couldn't have been any simpler. Take the rather handsome looking X5 and make it smaller. Easy. But Chris Bangle, BMW's new chief designer, didn't want to take the easy road. Instead, he decided to radically change everything. And not for the better. Look at those turn lights! What's up with that? They look like they came from a different car. You know how they do those clay models to see what the real size car will look like? Well, it must have been at that point that someone realized, oh crap, the car's missing the turn lights. And Bengal was like, don't worry, I have some pair in my pocket, just jam these in. And it's not like the taillights are any better, not with those tiny inserts anyway. Also, why the sharp edges on the grill and a complete misinterpretation of the traditional Hofmeister kink? Seems like they were changed just for the sake of change. Lastly, let's talk about the rugged black plastic all around the body. It's massive! The idea is to protect the body from scratches while you do your extreme off-roading, but the truth is, the X3 sucks off-road. It sits on a slightly raised 3-series chassis with a 3-series suspension and an all-wheel drive system. That's not enough, and that makes these black plastic pieces useless. And because the plastic is so massive, every X3 looks more like a budget SUV than a rugged one. Actually, it's not an SUV. BMW calls it SAV, the Sports Activity Vehicle. Which activity they had in mind, I wonder? The activity of gouging out your eyes, maybe? Number 6 The latest Z4 isn't exactly hideous. Don't get me wrong, it's not pretty either, but the reason it got this spot is because it could have been the prettiest BMW ever made. Just check out this concept car. Why couldn't it look like this? A curved front splitter flanked by the body from both sides is so simple and yet so effective. There's a much rounder kidney grill that has a sort of shark nose angle to it and more aggressive, more piercing headlights make it look mean as hell. Check out this side angle. It looks like a torpedo. Now back to the production car. Headlights are larger, more bubbly, and less menacing. The grill sits upright, so the shark nose is gone too, but the worst is the front bumper. Lines here and here and here and here, and these two don't even meet. Shapes overlapping, stretching, I don't think they could have made it more complicated even if they tried. The shape of the side skirts is toned down too, and the rear was ruined by this gigantic indentation for the number plates. Why do any of that? Why did they make it uglier? Most people were disappointed by the Toyota's car, but for a professional graphic designer like me, the unveiling of the BMW Z4 was an even bigger letdown. Disappointed! Number 5 Most people will point to the X6 and call it ugly, but there's no denying the fact that the aggressive lines, massive wheels, and the immense size do give the X6 a huge road presence. Sadly, that's not something I can say about the X4, because the X4 is missing two of those attributes, size and the wheels. Let's start with the size. The X6 is large, so has enough room to sit grown-ups in the back while also having a nice smooth coupe line. But the X4 is smaller, so the roof line had to be extended further back where it ends in a less elegant, bulging way. Close by, you'll also find the new BMW taillights, which are much narrower than before, and they arc down, leaving a massive bulk of metal above them. Makes the whole ass look disproportionately tall. It's like a big lady with teeny tiny little underwear. The old one was much better in my opinion. Also, because the body is lifted, you get to see the tires peeking from below, and unlike on its bigger brother, these are narrow. Like, way too narrow for the ass of that size. It just looks pathetic. No amount of aggressive lines will make your car look menacing if it's got chicken legs. So yeah, it's even uglier than the X6. And it's a wimp too. Number 4 BMW has a long-lasting problem designing small cars. It all began with the E36 Compact, which is a regular 3 Series with its ass chopped off. Like, hey, where's the rest of the car? But still better than what they did to its successor, the E46 Compact. 
Wishing to differentiate it more from the full-size model, BMW added beady little headlights, which now made the front look uglier too. Next up was Bavarian's first conventional hatchback, the 1 Series. It's the Bengal era car, so everything looks either weird or ugly, but I especially hate this arched line between the wheels. It makes the whole car look like a saggy old sofa that was used by someone really fat. The next model was again ugly. Less soggy, but with gigantic sad headlights, pulled way too far apart. Looking at it, I'm not sure who's going to start crying first, me or the car. Oh, I'd also like to show you this line. Most people don't notice it, but it's there for sure. Who thought that this looked good? And who thought, yes, I like that, I'd like to buy one. The facelift did fix the front, but then it ruined the rear. And as for the latest generation, well, that's just a squashed down 2 Series active tour minivan with a piggy nose. Will BMW ever learn how to make a pretty compact car? Number 3. I'm really struggling to like this emotionless lump of metal that looks more like a fridge on wheels than a car. It's the iX, a forced attempt to make a cool and futuristic looking EV at the expense of everything that made all other BMWs so recognizable and loved. Let's talk about that oversized grill. Some say it looks like a pig's nose, some say it's chipmunk's teeth, but all I see is an imprint of someone's giant butt cheeks. The iX has an ass face, and now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. But for me, the side is even worse. It's just featureless. The only lines are the wheel arches, and they're the wrong shape. Also, the side skirts are hanging way too low, which makes the car look as if it's dragging its fat underbelly all over the road. And look at the rear end. Because the glass ends too soon, the back feels extended way too far back, with the trunk door looking like it's been tacked on. Here, let me fix that for you. I could go on and on, but let's cut it short. It's ugly. I think so. Enraged BMW fans on Twitter think so. And lastly, Frank Stephenson, who designed the original X5, thinks so as well. Again, the proportions are just off, I would believe. He used the word fugly to describe it and rated the design at 3 of 10. That was generous, if you ask me. Number 2. The E38, or as I like to call it, the 007 series, was always going to be a tough act to follow. It was long, wide, slim like an athlete, and so cool that even James Bond himself ditched his Aston Martin for this Beamer. But then Chris Bengel happened, and he did the complete opposite with the new model. His E65 7 series was fat, bloated, stubby, totally uncool, and unbelievably ugly from every angle. The sides were just huge slabs of metal, virtually without any lines. The rear had the infamous bangle butt with broken up taillights and protruding trunk lid. And then we have to mention the front. This part is the face of the car. How you design the headlights, grills, and intakes dictates what feeling the car will be expressing. For example, cute, aggressive, sad like it's lost all its will to live. Look at those eyes full of depression and frowning lips. It's as if the car is aware of its ugliness and is sad about it. Oh, what have they done to me? To say that the design was controversial is an understatement. The sales of the new BMW 7 Series fell by 60% in its first year compared to the outgoing model. And as for Chris Bangle, well, he received so much hate for his designs that after quitting BMW, he also quit the whole car industry forever. Number 1. Well, of course the new M3 is at number one, and not only do I think it's the ugliest BMW, but one of the ugliest cars as well, rivaling the Aztec, Multipla, and the Prius. Let's start with the elephant in the room, that horrendous front end. On the regular 4 Series, the gigantic vertical grille is much smoother and it fits better with the rest of the car, whereas the M models, it's all sharp and angular. These edgy geometric lines come from the new BMW design language found on the electric concept cars and they were just forced under the current models. Newsflash, they don't work. The rest of the front is also a mess. Nothing makes any sense. I mean, what happened to the bottom part? Is this really the best solution? The grille should have never gone all the way down, splitting this area into two. It should have been like on the CLS homage. Still big, but much better. 
And what's with all the lines each going their own way? Nothing is connected. It's not a cohesive front, just a bunch of shapes scattered all around. The rear is also bad. I never really liked those taillights stolen from Alexis, but what's really bothering me is what's happening below them. First there's this tall, encompassing line, then this sagging, extruding bumper, and below it, another level from a diffuser. You can get one more step with the Performance Parts Package, which adds a fourth extrusion around the central exhaust tips. This, in my opinion, looks awful. As if the car has hemorrhoids, you know, those pimples on your asshole. The new M3 is just ugly, and I reckon the aftermarket companies will get very rich selling body kits for it. Alright, here's some more ugly BMWs. Did you guess them? Which new BMW gives you a gag reflex? Comment below, vote here which topic I should do next, and we'll see you in the next one.